Hello, I'm Laura Ludwig, and you're listening to A Space. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Right, Louis, over to you. Hello there, and welcome to the A Space. We are back again with another episode with the world's best volleyballers. We have had some absolute superstars, and we have another one for you this week. My name is Louis Lett, and I'll be today's host. On other occasions, it will be Dave Rogers, and we'll be joined by our CEV legends, Matt Rogers or Daniel Meanley. Today, we have Matt here with us. Hey, Matt, how are you doing? Hey, Louis. Yeah, good, thanks. Yeah, good. You've been excited for this one all week, haven't you? I have, I have, yeah. <laughs> been been looking forward to it. When I do the research, it kind, of, it kind of starts to feel real, doesn't it? That's the thing. And we've it's... got loads that we could look into on this guest, so looking forward to it. Yeah, we could, we could talk for hours. Just so you know, uh, guys know, these episodes are recorded remotely due to the current situation. We're going to be releasing these alternately with our Unscripted and Debate series, which will come out on a Friday. Right, the exciting moment. It's time to meet this week's guest. And I can say officially that she's an absolute rock star of the sport. An Olympic gold medalist, a world champion, a four-time European champion, three-time winner of the World Tour Finals, three-time Olympian, 2007 Most Improved, 2011 Best Offensive Player, 2013 Best Defensive Player, 2013 Most Inspirational, 2015 Sportsperson. There's a lot more and we will go through them as this episode continues, but the most probably the biggest role model in the sport at the moment that represents hard work grit determination and she's blimming charming as well Stop she's it. an incredible Stop once it. in a generation talent and i have butterflies in her. welcome to the podcast Laura Ludwig. hello no, i'm red and i don't know what to say hello <laughs> thanks a lot for this introduction introduction well, we even had to miss out half of your achievements because there were so many. I only got down to like 20, 20 30, but you know, we ran out of time. I, 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 my smile got bigger and bigger, but my, uh, my muscles in my cheeks, they are not, um, yeah, not so strong right now anymore because I'm, I don't know, maybe I'm not smiling enough. <laughs> but I got like, oh, oh, oh. I mean, do, do you ever sort of like listen to something like that and look back and just, it's un unbelievable achievements over the past 10 years? The, um, the cool thing is that actually the, um, the introduction, is that introduction? Introduction. Introduction, is, introduction um, in the last weeks was always a little bit similar and I'm always like, oh yes, I'm, listen I'm listening and I'm, I can't wait to hear it again because it's like you forget about those things sometimes because of all the day and with the kid you especially with the kid you forget a lot about beach volleyball sometimes and then it's really nice to hear sometimes about actually um, about the success what you had in the last years and what you did as a player and um, not just being a mom right now because <laughs> children are a great neutralizer aren't they they really bring Definitely. you back down to earth totally <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was expecting you to start listing some stuff from her school. Maybe there were some school awards that we, we should mention as well. <laughs> I think I, didn't, I don't have any school awards. Nothing from school, you must have. Like, you mean being intelli intelligent? No. <laughs> I don't know. You must have been like best sportswoman at your school or something, surely. No, actually not, no. I think we never had, um, like, I can't remember that we had awards in school or something like this, but after school, actually, they were inviting us. Um, after being at the Olympics, that was before I... Uh, did I have a gold medal? I'm not sure actually, but I, I remember I went back to my school, which I really liked because it was a sports school. Um, and uh, I really missed it because it was still at home in Berlin. And um, so they invited me to come back as an Olympian and um, to talk a little bit about my, about my experiences to the young um, students or uh, pupils. And yeah, that was really exciting. I was really nervous to talk about it, actually standing on stage in my old school. <laughs> Were there any teachers still there from when you were yes. at school? Oh, from, wow. Yeah, yeah. But my favorite ones. So that's why it was um, easy to stay ah, nice. and uh, answer some questions there. Yeah. I would get really nervous going back to my old school with my uh, school reports, uh, the way that they were. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be, yeah, you can always, always talking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know um, why I believe that so much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you make a living from talking, Louis. So it was yeah. it was all practice. Yeah. I still don't understand. Yeah, it was still have 
So yeah, no idea. You, you learn for life yeah. in school. No, no, not everybody can say that. <laughs> yeah, for, for sure. Matt, how was your, how was your school reports? Uh, you get back average, I would say. I would say average. My issue was I liked everything, but I wasn't great at anything. <laughs> so I was just kind of like in the middle. Go just, through. Yeah, just snuck through. You know, didn't overachieve, didn't underachieve. Just did it, finished it, moved on. Really. Um, yeah. How's it in England? How um, until when is the school going? Like, how many classes you're doing? Uh, well, you can finish at sixteen. You can finish at sixteen. Oh uh, uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I finished well, at eighteen. What is funny, though, is I was rubbish at languages and I now work in Luxembourg and I have a Dutch wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I heard you still don't speak Dutch. <laughs> oh, that's on the podcast now. No, I don't. My four year old is correcting my Dutch. That's how bad it is. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's shift it back to Laura. Um, <laughs> so this episode is the summer of 16, Louis, but there's something I wanted to just raise beforehand because... Myself and another co-host on this show, Laura, have been a bit naughty. We've done a covert interview with someone. So Louis isn't actually aware of this. And what we did was we've got 20 odd questions with this guest. Louis is looking really worried now. We've got 20 <laughs> odd questions with this guest and we're going to release one every week. And slowly people will start to work out who it is. So oh. if it's OK with you, I just want to play the first clue and then you can maybe have a guess who this star is that we've interviewed. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this is the first clue on our mystery mystery guest, and I'll I'll tell you now he's a man. We're going to call him our mystery man, and let's see if you can have any guesses who it is after you hear this clue number one. Do you play volleyball, beach volleyball, or snow volleyball? Volleyball. So you've that got one Brazilian. word. You're going with a Brazilian. Okay. Yes. Louis, how do you feel about not being involved in our covert operation? You're okay with that? Yeah, I'm fine, but. I don't know how I'm supposed to have a have a guess at who this is. So let's let's go. If they are Brazilian. I'm, I'm going to go. Like who, who drunk who drunk coffee this morning? Who? <laughs> <laughs> I got no idea. No idea. So all we know that we well all we think so far is I'm, that he's he's Brazilian. Yes. Okay. I'm going to. Yep. No but, names, Louis. You don't want to throw a name out there just in case you get it on the phone. I'm going to go Je Je Genia, Genia Grabinikov, the French He's not Brazilian. Oh, you're going French. Yep. Okay. Yep. Well, I cannot confirm nor deny um, that it is Genia. Um, but yeah, so that is our mystery man. We'll have one clue every, every podcast. Wow, interesting. And hopefully by the end of the summer, someone's got it right. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, it would be embarrassing for the mystery men. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it would be. It would be. All right. Shall we start talking then about the summer of 16? Yes, please. <laughs> now, does the fact that you're an Olympic gold medalist ever get old? Just for someone asking for a, for a guy who's never going to win one. Um... No, never. Never, never, never. Especially now that it's for one more year longer. <laughs> Yeah, true. How, how do you how do you feel about that? Like, what, yeah, what's the initial feeling of the postponement? Oh, there's lots of feelings about it. Um, the first feeling, although we knew it's gonna be like this, that we have to wait for one probably one year longer. Um, when they announced it, I was really shocked. Like it was really like in a hole because we were working like probably everybody, every athlete was working for a long, long time. Um, to it and um, had the big aim in this year and then suddenly it was gone and um, yeah the, I was definitely for like probably three days I even didn't want to talk about my questions in my head or um, yeah anything like this and I was just playing with Tio all day long and I really didn't want to play uh, talk about beach volleyball um, yeah and then my questions got bigger and bigger and um, yeah I wanted just to know answers and um, yeah then I started talking again about it but it was really strange in the beginning I was really like nah I, I'm not gonna do this it sounds so hard one more year longer and I had other, other plans and yeah so um, a little bit strange but right now um, I see more the positive things about it having more time and especially with our situation that we were new as a team and had um, still to um, uh, learn a lot of things and also get to know each other even better on court and so we have actually more time for it and this is a little bit bigger in my head now I'm right now yeah I yeah that's fascinating that you say you can see the positives because from the outside looking like I think that 
it's, it's awesome for you guys with that extra year and yes. how, your, how your season just went like bam at the yeah. end and now you have even more time to yeah, make the magic. Yeah, especially we had a really nice pre-season, uh, yeah, pre-season or like a prepar um, preparation and it felt like in the end of the year. So we really wanted to go in the tournaments and see if it's working again or was it just this one time? So, and then suddenly it stopped and um, that made probably the hole in our head and our feelings, emotions. Um, but I actually, I don't want to be in the shoes from younger players like um, Clemens uh, Wickler and Julius Tolle. I think that's um, way harder. So I'm fine in my position. <laughs> It's comfortable now. You've got the answers that you need and you're kind of at ease with the situation. A little bit better, yeah, definitely. Uh, good. Experience is helping as opposed to, I imagine if it's your first Olympic Games and you're psyching yourself up for the first one and then it gets put back a year, you're just... Seriously, imagine Imagine even you have those thoughts in the head that they, made, they um, cancelled the um, Olympics. I mean, it's still some voices or like um how do you say gossips that they're um, that they maybe won't happen and that is the first olympics you have and you fight for it and you're qualified already and you're kind of a um, um underdog for the medal i mean our germans are amazing players and um yeah and then suddenly maybe they won't be there so working with this now it's crazy <laughs> and, and of course for the the olympics after there's only going to be a three-year gap Yes. And usually ah. I would say the year after the Olympics, top athletes use that time as Definitely. like a bit of a down. So, yeah. Yes. Kind of and difficult. especially also the world champs also get um, changed. Um, so the world champs from next year in Rome, they um, will happen the next yeah. year after, so 2022. Yeah. And then there's another world champs, 23, and then the Olympics. So it's a wow. lot of like big three years in the yeah. Rome. Huge. We are um, in episode three. We're going to be looking to the future a little bit more. So I'm oh, going to yeah. drag it a bit, and we're going to get a little bit nostalgic first. Which hopefully for you should always be be great. Talk to us about sort of 2016 on the whole. Like you didn't just. We're going to come to the Olympics, but you didn't just win the Olympics that year. Another in championships, major series in Hamburg and Klagenfurt, World Tour finals. You, you crushed it like you're pretty much invincible what are your you're smiling now what are your feelings looking back at the, the whole year and the bigger picture and what you created and what you uh, and the success you had um yeah like um having a little bit of a distance now to 2016 and um yeah thinking about the year it was just unbelievable i always looked up to teams like um larissa juliana um carrie and misty who were had years um tournaments where they're just winning and you know nobody could beat them and then having a year where it felt a little bit like this with us or like now i can say it but in this year i wasn't thinking about it like this because you were always fighting for the next game and for the next tournament to win but now I can say, I think we were in this year um, somebody who was a little bit unbeatable. And um, that it's just really good. The hard work we had before and the trouble we had before, the injuries and everything. Um, we went through it as a team really good. And um, yeah, that's, that's like I can just smile when I look back um, for the year 2016. You guys are that team of this generation. Like that's yeah. That, that, for no the doubt. year, I would say the years before we had lots of ups and downs, but the 2016, I mean, the now I can say we were definitely um, a hard team to beat. <laughs> but, yeah, but I even think since then, look, like looking how open it is again now, just proves how difficult it was to become that team. I think um, the women's game is so open now; it's amazing to yes. amazing to follow, and I I really enjoy it because of how open it is and how anyone can be anyone. At the start of 2013, when Evan and Kira joined forces, um, I imagine that was the plan three years on the line to win the Olympic Games, but did you ever feel it would be that dominant? And, and can you talk us through the, those early stages of your partnership? Yeah, um, first of all, I, um... I had the first time the feeling when I saw Julius and um, Jonas um, winning the gold medal in London and I was sitting on the bench or on the, in the big stadium and I saw them winning and my first thought was like, I want this as well. <laughs> if the, those Germans 
can, those Germans can win the medal, the gold medal. I think I can do this as well. So that was my first thought and I really um, wanted it. And before I always, I liked winning, obviously. Everybody likes winning, but it was never like I um, really believed that I can do it or we could do it. And um, yeah, from that moment, I kind of started thinking I really want to be the best. Um, so, and um, yeah, I saw Kira uh, playing and she was already with her young age, a big blocker and really aggressive on court and she loved winning and you could see she hated losing. So I really wanted um, ne uh, her next to me. And um, yeah, we um, came to the point where we um, needed a coach and then we just asked Jürgen, uh, who was coach from Julius and Jonas before, and asked what he would, um, if he would um, practice uh, or coach us. And then he had this long, long talk, uh, big talk about how, uh, how much I need to change and how much um, I need to uh, do this and this and this. And then after the talk, he said, and I think after a year you will quit because you're not the person you, um, you, you can do it. And I was just sitting there. I will show you I can do it. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that was kind of the start um, where he really got the thing out of me. Well, so yeah, and Kira is just a hard worker. Kira was a hard worker from beginning on. She, um, yeah, wanted always to win. I think from the beginning on, she was a big winner. And um, yeah, that's why it was actually a really good fit or a good, good mix up between of us and the coach. So who, who was Cupid, or am I right in saying you were the one that targeted Kira to say, no, I want you as my partner? Or was um, there someone yeah. who said, no, you two would be good together? No, I asked her. Like, I would definitely, I, I have, have a mentor as well, kind of. Um, my first coach, my first beach rubber coach, um, Olaf Kortmann. And I was talking with him a lot about some players. And um, But yeah, in the end, we were both talking um, about Kira. I was a little bit um, unsure because of her injuries already in this uh, young age. But um, yeah, you could see her on court and you knew you want her next to, um, to yourself and you don't want to play against her. <laughs> For sure. Just, just the, you, you mentioned, um, obviously, Jorg and, and the relationship there. Do you think he was being honest or do you think he just knew from the get go how to get the best out of you? He's a very smart person and he knows about uh, personality very quick. He is really good in reading persons. And um, I asked him after, actually, I asked him, do you remember the talk and um, that you said this? And he said, I even don't remember that I said it like this. And I was like, that was really like a poof in my heart. And um, you got me like this. And he was like, yeah, I can't remember. But I think he's doing a lot out of the emotions as well and um, out of the situations. And maybe he saw it in my face or that he has to trigger me a little bit. I don't know. How, how did it go? Um, I actually, in preparation for this interview this morning, spoke to uh, Craig Susu. I spoke to Seuss for about an hour, which was, which was awesome. And he said when? the thing this morning. Like, really? We, we spoke, yeah, yeah. Like, we, yeah. like the last days I'm thinking about, I need to call him. I, I can't believe that I didn't hear him for probably longer than a year. We, we, we prepare it. properly, we do. We, we, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is a bit like This Is Your Life. I don't know if you have that program in Germany, but uh, yeah, we've, we've gone through. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> we, well, you'll see. <laughs> yeah, he, he was, he was on, in great form. I, yeah, he would obviously, he was so proud of, of, of what you've achieved and, and how far you've come. He did say that uh, when you, you would look at all the, the data and the stats before a game and, and pick out a game plan, you would get a feel um, yourself and you would go the other way into whatever you were feeling and what you could read and no no but he meant in the yeah, most yeah. amazing amazing ways like that would be the stats would that be this was was that sort of difficult with your he's like i want you to do this this and this but you get a bit of intuition and you want to go your own way or no, actually, Jürgen is like this as well, that he is really open with this. He has like structures for us, um, um, but he, know, he knew us as players as well. And he knew also what we can do on court and that we can adapt to a lot of things. And actually, we were practicing more that we can adapt quick and think a little bit by our own. Um, so, and that's why it was a little bit like we knew about the players, um, what they like the most, but um, actually the, yeah, coming up with the big plan or the adaptation on, um, on the um, um, tactic was actually always in the game. 
Perfect. I I can see like when I watch you play, like you're the you're the best reader of a game I think I've seen. Like alongside Anders when blocking, like just just create another level. You and him so, would yeah. be a great work. team, by the way. Imagine Ooh, that. What? You and Anders Mole would be a great <laughs> team. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, but behind Mole, I think it's. Um, yeah, it, it's probably a little bit easier to defend. <laughs> we need to change a few of the rules, though, with the genders and the nationalities. But if we get around those, that's a great team. Sorry, Maggie. I, sh I shouldn't be just... <laughs> I'm sorry, Laura. Zorum as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it would be interesting, still... actually, some mixed teams. But, but when I'm thinking about it, I actually don't want to get a ball from a um, guy hit into my face. I really don't want to. I'm sure you'd move out the the way. It'd be like the Matrix. You'd get out of the way. No. Now sometimes actually we're practicing with boys, and I'm really always amazed about how fast the ball can fly. There's such a, such a difference. It's crazy. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. That's another thing that, that Craig said today, though, is that he could feed from wherever as hard as he could, and you just get yourself in the way of it, get your platform on it, and pop it up. So I I, I disagree with what you just said. <laughs> Did he actually tell you that um, I was always a little bit lazy to get the line shots and he was one time he was um, we had a singing session and he was telling me oh I have a new exercise for you and then he was preparing a ball putting chocolate bars on the ball stuck on them and because he, lo he knows I love chocolate so that I run after a ball because of chocolate and that was his <laughs> <laughs> exercise and I was like are you kidding me but for that Actually, for this practice, I was actually running for some line shots. <laughs> so he, he knew me I, quite good. <laughs> I, I think that's brilliant. Yeah, I, I think that might make me want to play. Actually. <laughs> I think, that might I think you, get me I, I'm not sure about you, but probably you have to put Nutella on the ball, like really put it uh, <laughs> with a knife on the ball. So. But the problem is, as soon as it hits the sand, you've ruined the Nutella. <laughs> no, but he really wants it hard, so he's going quick for the ball. Okay. Yeah. Oh, he gets there. Does, Louis gets there. Really okay. Uh, I just, <laughs> I just can't put the ball on the floor. Uh, every, every rally is a mega rally for me. Um, <laughs> unfortunately. So at the start of that season, let's get back to you. Start of that season, you sit down as the team. Twenty sixteen. What's what is the plan towards the gold medal? Like, what's the sort of conversation for any beach volleyball fan, coach out there? How is it facilitated and then how do you drive forward through to, to, to reach your goals? I think that um, it's not only the start of... <laughs> Boom, that's the tip. <laughs> um, but um, it's not, that was not the, just the start of 2016. I think there was a lot of talking before as well to really... Um, get into routines, like especially also with your, um, or with our psychologist, with our mental coach, that we get into routines, which we really can um, get out of us without even thinking about it. So really when we need them, like in a really, really important event like the Olympics, so that we have those routines and um, how do you say, like it's coming, everything is coming automatically and you don't have to think so much about it. And especially when you're nervous, you get so tense that uh, your movement is not as, as the movements when you just practice or when you have a normal game in a tournament. So we, we really try to work um, to the ideal movement and to the ideal uh, routines which we have um, for the game, for the thinking like we had, um, uh, we did a lot of exercises um, so that we, like for me, for example, I had um, for the uh, Olympics, uh, let's start um, new. So for um, London and Beijing, I was always so nervous and I had the feeling I couldn't move um, as I normally move. Like I, I felt like a stone and I was always afraid about the next one that I mess it up again. Um, because before the Olympics, I always felt like I'm, we, can, we can do this, I'm unbeatable. And in the Olympics, I was always playing really bad. And so I was talking a lot with my psychologist about it. And um, so we tried to work um, for four years um, about um, routines so that uh, we can use this as in this big event. So I don't think it's only this one year which makes us strong. It was more the three years before, um, which um, helped us through the Olympics, actually. Completely. Um, was there? Sorry, Matt. You, you go for it. I have, I have a, a question. I'm, I'm assuming the answer is yes, but I want to ask: Did you go to those other Olympics, so before Rio, Beijing, London, expecting, planning, thinking you were going to win the gold medal? 
I tried to say it, but I actually didn't believe it, I think. I think it was definitely different to Rio. Rio was a little bit uh, more that I could feel that we can do it, I have to say, yeah. So, so the feeling was different going into it? Yeah, more I feel sorry to say it actually because, um, because it's always hard saying it after, but um, I really wanted it, but I probably didn't believe it, no. Yeah, so it's probably a step, a step too far, but you, you were trying, obviously, and, and going yes. for it. For but sure. Deep yeah. down, you were thinking, okay, maybe it's a bit, a bit there too There are far, lots maybe. of other teams which are definitely better. And um, then you have really to play at your best at the big event uh, where everybody is watching. And yeah. um, so I was, and we also for the first Olympics, you really don't know, you go on this tournament and you really don't know how it will be. You think it's like a, a, like a tournament, like every other tournament. But then the first time you are totally, <laughs> because like, or the Olympic Village, or the other athletes, or the other um, sport which is going on. And you want to see everything because it's so exciting. And um, I was definitely not focused enough to um, win anything there. <laughs> but now in hindsight, it, it's also all part of that process maybe that led you to that gold medal and that experience on, on the way, right? Yeah, that's um, like for Kira, it was, for example, the first Olympics. And she mm -hmm. definitely was, um, yeah, trusted us um, hundred percent I guess in the end she had to um, so that she was believing in everything we said and what the um, psychologist said what Jürgen said because um, all of them are also with me we were at the Olympics and we had those experiences and she was really good in trusting us it's very mature for for a first Olympics to behave like that and go and win a gold medal right that, that says a lot about like this <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. Un un unbeatable. Um, and with, with this age as well. I mean, this is really, um, yeah, standing on court there and having all the crowd um, against you even, like with the semi-final and the final against Brazil was really difficult. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, being as strong as Kira was pretty amazing. Yeah. What, uh, just, just quickly, could you possibly give an example of the psychologist or a routine um, for anyone that, that plays a game listening? I imagine, or I like to imagine that most of the people that listen to this podcast are players or, or coaches. Yeah, I, um, like, first of all, I need to say what I, um, I was not always a fan of psychologists, um, but when I met Annette, our psych uh, she's still our psychologist, and I really liked the way she was talking with us or talking with me in the beginning. It was more like just a dialogue, getting to know each other. And it is kind of still like just a dialogue and asking a lot of questions. And then I'm giving more and more my answers about some problems or about some and uh, things which are um, going in my head. Um, so it's really, I like the, wor uh, the way she's working. It's not like it's only exercise and, and I have to do homework and it's not difficult. Um, 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 like before I was really uh, anxious about it. I was um, uh, scared about all the work I have to do and coming out of my comfort zone, all those things. It is like, um, uh, it was like every, a lot of players or people have it to go out of the comfort zone is always hard. Um, but uh, yeah, we started with routines. Um, like in the beginning, I had um, always, um, I still have this little um, doubt devil on my shoulders, which is always telling me you're not good enough, you can't do it. And um, uh, I was really working with her um, through this, um, getting him away or actually having also the a good one, the angel, which is um, hitting this one. <laughs> and um, uh, we did some exercises about us, having pictures. I'm a person which is working a lot with pictures. Uh, I can picture a lot. Um, and yeah, we went through some positive games and um, trying to get the feel in the positive games where I felt unbeatable. And so get this into a bad game. So, so and then I had kind of a TV, for example, which I could switch off and on. And uh, at the Olympics on the bench, I had also my uh, TV remote, remote, how do you say this? Yeah, my TV remote, yeah. like this. Remote, yes. Yeah, exactly like this. And I could switch here's, on here's and off. Here's, here's <laughs> what I made earlier. I was ready for that. What are you watching? Uh, why are we talking? It's like my second screen is a TV. <laughs> yeah, okay. it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a cookery show. It's, it's, not, it's not how it works. It's Paw Patrol. Everybody who has kids knows Paw Patrol. Oh, Paw Patrol, yeah. Rider. <laughs> Uh, so yeah so like an exercise for example like this um, or 
um, for especially for the Olympics, what it was difficult because of the noise from the Brazilians and all the booing and being against you. Um, he gave, um, she gave me also a really simple exercise, um, controlling a little bit, um, not my ears, um, giving the sense more in my feet, feeling the sand, feeling the ball. So I was not um, listening to the crowd anymore. So like little things like this were, were really helping um, from her. Or having, yeah, ask your questions. Otherwise I keep talking all day long probably. No, no, this is... It's funny that you talk to us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was going to say, sure. I mean, listening to you now for, for 10 or 15 minutes, I think playing in Rio and in Brazil probably helped you because oh. you had to prove them all wrong in a, to a certain way. You know, it wasn't just that coach who said that thing. You were in a, yeah. in a kind of, yeah, what did you refer to it? The lion's den. You were in the lion's den. Everyone's booing and you were, you were proving them all wrong. So I yes. think that probably helped you. Yeah. I wrote the stanza question to ask because I was like how on earth does that feel to be on the Copa like playing Brazil in the last four of an Olympic Games and then playing them in the final again like that's the stuff that that almost dreams are made of right in a way I like actually in the end I have to say it was probably harder for them than for us uh, I mean having the crowd with you but don't uh, you don't want to disappoint the your country um you don't especially the Bra brazilians uh, don't want to dis um, disappoint the um yeah, federation rio de janeiro copacabana and all the things um i think they definitely had it harder i would be probably nervous more nervous being in hamburg and playing um no, I wasn't actually. It was really good. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you, you, I was going to say, you're unbelievable. I wasn't, <laughs> no, it wasn't the Olympics. It wasn't final, so it's a little bit different. <laughs> but, okay. Um, but I think it's still, it still, um, it was definitely hard for the Brazilians. Um, it felt actually after three or four points where we got the rhythm and we could feel we can do it. It felt just great. It felt like every point we did, and they were booing more and more in the beginning it felt even greater and then they got a little bit quieter and then it felt more quiet and more better and better <laughs> now i'm getting excited again i get red cheeks already <laughs> yeah, i i'm get, i'm getting red cheeks listening to it don't worry it's um it's, it's brilliant the one th the one thing that i've taken out of this um that for anyone who plays is that you've just you just mentioned that you have that devil and angel on your shoulders it's like i have it all the time um and, and for anybody else yeah for sure i have the same sort right. of same analogy but, but uh, to hear that, you, hear that you have it just um is yeah but it's, i think it's, it's like um, a lot of people have it not only athletes I, I i'm quite sure everybody has doubts or um, questions in their head and then it's nice to talk about it and know some answers and routines and um yeah breathing sometimes and not get panicking too much about it did you did you uh breathing such a big part of psychology as well bringing the heart rate down and focusing especially I mean, when you're going to hit that little data on the serve that you've got surely <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's funny it's like, um everybody's talking about the special stuff actually you listen yona started with this i just copied them <laughs> Yeah, Julia said it was the first time I saw it, and I'm like, oh, there, there it is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, um, yeah, they were so good. I had to copy something, so <laughs> they were doing something good. And and Nick and Nick, their coach, at the same time. Perfect. Yep. <laughs> I, I do. Um, so 2016 starts. You win in 2015 in uh, Porto Vallarta in yeah, lovely Mexico. Um, then you start, sorry, you start with a couple of fifths. Uh, is it a fifth or a ninth? Sorry, let me have a look at this. Um, so the winning actually didn't start until a little bit later on in the year when, this, when the summer kicked in. What were the thoughts post preseason? Um, a, a couple of sort of uh, well, the fifth and the ninth. How is the feeling at that point towards the Olympic Games? Is that sort of all part of the we're not there yet and that's okay, we're building, or is that pressure building? No, I think um, we at that point we kind of knew that we were qualified for the Olympics and um, and in the prepara uh, prepara preparation preparation <laughs> we <Yep>. did <laughs> a lot for um, um, the peaking in in June uh, July August so um, that's why we knew we will have a slow start our coach was always preparing um, uh, for this um, situation. 
um, and we knew we were not going to be at the, our best in the beginning. So actually there was no, like it was always with the self person thing that you want to win and you lost. So definitely frustration was there, but we always um, yeah, came back to the ground and knew, okay, there's a bigger thing we want to achieve. And um, it was kind of always like this, that our preparation was always a big thing. Um, we did a lot of technique stuff, athletic stuff, and uh, weren't um, so um, aware about or not so conscious about the playing um, or the competition practice. So that always started really late. So just before the first tournaments, we started with big competition practice because we knew in the end we needed more. Um, so that's why we knew, okay, we need to get into the rhythm with playing. Like it's totally different, for example, for the Brazilians or Americans, uh, or especially the Brazilians, they play a lot, especially um, also in our winter. They have their tournaments, their national tour, and they are really playing teams and that's such a different um, rhythm which they have so when you play in the beginning against the brazils and you they just beat you and you think you can't play beach volleyball and then it's getting more we adapt more and more with the playing um over the season so sometimes it's really um crazy with the rhythm of um games yeah. Because I'm a big I'm a big rugby fan, and I watched a documentary. I don't know if you follow rugby or even know rugby. Ask ask I Morf know about rugby. rugby. But... <laughs> yeah, Morf will tell you all about rugby. <laughs> but there was this there was this documentary about Johnny Wilkinson, who was a, a key position for the England team, and they basically said it was a four year plan to get him at his peak for the World Cup. Yes. It was it was all about the World Cup for four years. So he uh, was playing, not playing, resting, and it was a whole four year plan. And and it's... if you if you don't succeed you know, away from an Olympics, that's not always a bad thing. It yeah. can be, it can be a good thing. It's definitely like this. Um, it's always, it's cool trusting also in this. We had also like uh, everybody tries to have a four years plan and really trusting in this plan. And even when you lose being calm or when you have problems with your bodies, being calm and have the patience and um, the belief that you actually still can do it. I really had to work on this patient thing. Like I, I'm a, I hate like, Patience is always a word which I need to um, learn new again and again and again in every single situation I have. And um, uh, so, um, yeah, patience is definitely the key. The trust and patience is the key. Yeah, yeah. interesting and good to hear. That's sort of why I asked about the periodization. I just saw like the perfect rise to, to success um, throughout that season. It was, it was great to go back through your results and actually... Yeah, to see it go, hang on, this, this has just been planned perfectly, <laughs> um, which is always nice to hear. Um, yeah. So then you go, you go uh, to Moscow, there's a ninth there, there's, there, then it starts to get really interesting. Um, two final fours in the major series, Porich and Stad, and then you win in Klagenfurt before you head to the Olympic Games. Do you and Kira like look at each other at that point and go, yeah, we've got this? Is that a big psychological sort of boost for you, or was it? Um... Yeah, the um, the crazy thing is, Klagenfurt was a hard, really, really hard tournament for us. We were um, like, Kira had problems with her shoulder. Um, she really did something with her right shoulder, and we lost the first match against uh, America against the young team um, Kelly and Sarah um, Hughes. And um, we were definitely down after this first uh, game and uh, we didn't talk to each other and it was really hard. Um, Kira was suffering with her shoulder and, uh, and all the, all just the way we played, I was really frustrated. Yeah, and after that, I don't know how we um, switched it around. We had, always, we had again the patience and the trust, I guess, and just um, went point by point and went back to our routines we had um, until then. And there was a really good practice tournament for the Olympics. Um, like I don't know, I don't know how our team did it. The coaches and also our physio who was there, he was saying actually, like Kira was about to not play anymore because she felt so bad. She was anxious about um, not uh, playing Rio because of the pain she had. And the physio was um, keep going, keep calm. You go for shooting, and we um, can like your body will do it. It will remember how um, how it can work. And he was right in the end. I mean, he could be also wrong and he, uh, she would be really injured or something like this, or she would have a, like a um, psychologist, like a, how do you say it? Uh, like, yeah, being afraid because of her um, shoulder in the Olympics. 
but he he was just right like our coach Jürgen he was also right to play this tournament I was a little bit like oh is it not too close to the Olympics should we not make a pause maybe or something and he was no we play it and we have this as a practice tournament I said okay I'm li I listened and I said yes and we do it and then trust and patience yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> and trust and patience so uh, it was always a really good teamwork from everybody um, around us as well. It was not just us. Um, so um, the planning was definitely on point. Uh, and you got your passport confiscated on the way into oh Klagenfurt that year as well. I hated it so much. Did, 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 did you see this, Matt? No. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, uh, you, you have this story about getting pranked. And uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 yeah. yeah, it's funny, yeah. That's, that's my evil laugh. Um, the major series pranked um, Laura by um, putting two security guys um, in arrivals in Klagenfurt Airport and saying that she had to hand over her passport and it would take a week to come back, knowing, oh. knowing, fair, knowing farewell that she was going to Rio the next week. Um, so I, I laugh really evilly, but... I it, can't it believe that they did this. Like, what if I would be... I don't know if I get uh, a mental, I don't know, down because of this. <laughs> <laughs> and I would have lost because of them. I, it, I have to say, it's funny. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> for everyone else, maybe, not for you. But, I was uh, really so close to be really bad with them. I, I think we were joking a little bit around and then... Um, I, I, I thought it, it's getting serious and more serious and then I really got like oh, anxious about it and I had already my plan how to travel back from Klagenfurt and get to Rio and um, yeah in the end yeah I'm Hannes stand stood there and I asked him I, I still didn't get that it was a prank I asked him for help <laughs> yeah <laughs> I need help um, at the same time like I like I like a ballsy move. Like I like doing things that are a bit out there. But that was that was Good far for further you. than yeah, I, no no no. It's far further than I would ever go. To prank <laughs> anybody like that. Um, perfect. You go. You go to. You win in Klagenfurt. You go to Rio. Um, how are you feeling? Night before, sort of. How are those post Olympic feelings? Uh, sorry, pre Olympic feelings post Klagenfurt. Um, and also, who are you, you, you're obviously looking at yourself and what you can do better, but there's a lot of media attention on Kerry Walsh Jennings and, and the Brazilians. Does that, is that sort of a good thing for you? Um, yeah, uh, it was, um, it was strange because I, I did, I tried to not read too much about um, what is going on and um, yeah, who like to see when which team and um, like thoughts of the, like any thoughts or thinking of this, I try to actually keep away from me. And I always uh, we were in our little apartments in uh, Rio de Janeiro in Ipanema, and so we were always drinking a glass of wine, having chocolate, so that I get calm and not thinking about all the other things which um, gonna be on court or in the stadium next day. So I tried to be a little, or we actually tried to be a little bit in our world, not thinking this is Olympics or a special tournament. So uh, we tried to do everything um, like we normally do, <laughs> drinking wine and eating chocolate. So <laughs> Drink, Drinking wine, eating chocolate and Olympic Games. No, <laughs> I mean, um, just, uh, just like a half a glass just for relaxation. And um, so... Um, yeah, trying to not look at the media and what's going on. But I had, uh, and I, like, I remember the game, the semi final, for example, um, Kerry and April against Agatha Barbara was really late and I was already in bed. And I thought, like, I know I'm not going to watch uh, or I'm not going to have a look who's going to win. I get up in the morning and then we see. But I remember that I woke up and wanted to see. And then it was. Um, Agatha Duda and not Kerry and April and I was a little bit happy about it I have to say. <laughs> yeah, I've been, for, for, you're completely allowed to be happy about who, who play in an Olympic final. It's like, right? it's that's, like a, that's acceptable. It's not a big secret, you're not uh, uh, like we won against Kerry and April but not a lot so and um, against Agatha Barbara we won a little bit more and then uh, that's why I was a little bit um, yeah satisfied about the um, result. That's it's a great story. I, think. <laughs> you, yeah, you, you, I forgot that we are actually on camera. <laughs> did Did you actually go back to sleep? Because you, did you wake up in the middle of the night? Yeah, yeah. yeah did you manage to go back to sleep? Yes. Easy, I would because never. I, 
Yeah, easy. I'd I never was happy. Be able to see that. <laughs> I I was um yeah, I was I was pretty devastated because I was working on table tennis throughout the Rio games. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't that far away, but I was also working like anything. And I remember trying to stream everything to watch you try and win the gold medal and just nothing would work for me. And I had to at the same time commentate on radio table tennis while trying to watch you win an Olympic gold. It, but I'll never, uh, it's almost like pretty, I, I, that's multitasking. That's not uh, bad actually doing this. King of it. <laughs> I'm never gonna <laughs> Never gonna I say I'm only, king of much. I heard <laughs> only women are able to do this, Louis. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe well. There's, there's a lot you don't know. There's, there's a lot you don't there's know. There's Louis level and then there's women's level, I think. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe my perception of it is a bit different. You you went through the Olympic Games only dropping one set, so in in my mind, like you crushed it. You dominated that Olympic Games, and as you got up towards the end, um, you seemed to sh obviously. I was again table tennis so I watched what I could but you seem to pull away what was your what's your preparation looking like uh, as a team um, before the night before or the day before you play aside we um, we had uh, always a little bit different and um, we like for example one day before a game we had um, still like we went to gym to have a little bit more attention attention in our muscles and then the um, next um, time after a game or before a game we had like one hour practice and um, there was always a little bit adapt to our, how our body feels what our coach um, thought we need um, for tension or for relaxation or for um, yeah all those sorts of stuff or like how we um, how our emotions are like sometimes maybe when you're too nervous then we need to get down and maybe we're not practicing because we think uh, like we may be overthinking something and um, so we um, actually the day in between the games we always practice, practice in Ipanema so that we are away from the stadium and not um, too much um, yeah with the um, stadium people with the people around the stadium the other teams and so that we are kind of still in our little world and um, uh, on the day we played we always had like I think a half an hour practice on the um, in the stadium and the practice courts and um, there was mostly for five six hours before the games and then um, we had an hour um, preparation on the video but I think that was before practice an hour um, preparation so we watched one game of the of our opponent and I have to say that was the first time we did it so long we never had like an hour um, meeting an hour meeting about our opponent we always had like 10 or 15 minutes um, um, yeah meetings and this time it was really different and I really liked it actually we are really um, going through a lot of points from the opponents um, we always watched a match against them um, so we knew what they do against us or what we can do better and that was really helpful so um, that um, I have to say, if we would have time or more energy for all the other tournaments, I would do this more, but I don't have the energy to do this always. And um, so, but that was interesting how much it helped. I, before I would have never um, thought it helped so much. Um, yeah, and then uh, we went mostly two and a half hours before the game to the um, stadium and I was always going in the taxi with my psychologist because we were going through a kind of routine I really liked it having her with me and she gave me always a calmness and we always did it also really spontaneous what I, write, what I always needed in the taxi or what I thought I need and she gave me like uh, some exercises we did before or, um, or just sitting there and not talking at all or maybe talking about the weather or something else. Um, so it was really cool um, to have an M next to me, by me. Yeah, and then going into the stadium and just feeling great. I always felt really um, great going to the stadium and going to the warm-up court. And, um, and the warm-up court was always like um, on a normal tournament as well. Normal, each did, uh, like Kira and me, we always had a little bit different warm-up with stretching, mobilization, um, stabilization, shoulder exercises. And then we always had our five um, uh, pepper, shoulder warming up, and then five side outs, 10 services, and that's it. Yeah. Was there any moment when you thought, hang on, this is an Olympic final? 
or did it just feel like another game? Actually, the in the Olympics this time, the first match against Egypt, I was so really, really nervous. And then the next games were kind of like normal. I didn't feel so normal because I felt really comfortable. And then like also quarterfinal and semifinal, I felt quite um, um, cool. But in the final, <laughs> I was so nervous. I really, I, I thought like, oh my gosh, I really, I feel like in London and Beijing, I can't move. And my warm up was really shit. And um, I looked to Jürgen and he just tried to give me the calmness and uh, go a little bit slower. You're rushing too much. And I was a little bit back to my old Laura being panicking and rushing and, um, so he, uh, yeah, he tried to get back to the routines and being calm. Um, yeah, that also when we did the task always outside of the um, stadium before the game, um, I had I, I could choose and I was choosing. Um, no, I think Barbara could choose and she was. Um, I can't remember, but I was choosing a side. And um, when we warmed up outside of our normal court, it was no wind at all. And then we went into the stadium and then suddenly this wind came and we were on the bad side. And I chose the side before and I was just like, oh, it can't go worse. Like I was so nervous and I had the bad side and I didn't tell Kira I choose the side because I felt so embarrassed. Does she know now? Uh, now, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Kira, so, some news for you. <laughs> the conditions in Rio were, were crazy though as well like I remember watching uh, Brazil USA in the men's quarterfinal for, for crazy for, for nuts. that Dalhauser um yeah against Alisson and Bruno it's just yeah but that beach volleyball huh? that beach volleyball life sometimes it is no wind and sometimes there's um crazy wind and some teams can play better with wind some not and um yeah that was really um but this time it was on our side <laughs> What can, can you can you talk us through the last point, and can you explain the feeling of achieving a life like that at the same time? So, can you remember the last point? Yeah, um, yeah. Barbara no, was served in... out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and I was going to say that's easy to remember. <laughs> yeah, and, we and we then... couldn't we couldn't even make the point, um, but then it felt uh, just like oh my gosh, we did it, we made it. Like, we couldn't believe it. We really couldn't believe it. We were just with each other. Um, and I think we started um, just screaming. I really forgot about everything around me. I uh, was just Kira and me. And then, um, oops, yeah, there's something else. You need to say thank you to the um, referees and definitely hug with the opponents. And then it was just our team, our people running with them. And um, yeah, the feeling about it was still unbelievable. I think we, we didn't realize it for a long, long time now. Well, that links us lovely into yeah. our next feature, which so we... is a, a game for you that's been <laughs> um, made by us and Matt's. Yeah, Matt, take it away, but it's all you. So we like to test people's memories a little bit. Mm. And what we've done is we've gone back to a an important and relevant person from your past and ask them to give a few clues. And the aim is that you can work out who they are. So it's a bit like the mystery man, but this of one course. is about you, someone from your career. But so you're asking the questions and the answer and I need to know who it is. Yes. Oh. So here we go. I'm Craig, share Craig Susu. <laughs> <laughs> no, too, that'd be way too easy. Too easy. <laughs> so here we go. I'm going to play it and then unpause it. Hi Laura, do you remember me? No? I'm going to give you three cues to help you work out who I am. Are you ready? We have encountered each other on a many occasion on the world tour. So that's, that's clue one. You've heard his voice. We had what? We did you've, what? You've encountered each other many times on the world tour. So that's a lot of people. But do you recognize him maybe from the voice? You could probably guess a nationality or an area that he's from. Any oh guesses? Gosh, I'm so bad with um, um, languages, but is it Italian? <laughs> you, have, you, have, you have another two guesses. Here we go. You have well, let, let's play on. Let's play on. Number two, it should start to become more easy. I had a front row seat to witness your win Olympic gold medal. So he had a front oh, China. Row. Jeez, he had a, no, no he, he had a front row seat to witness you winning the Olympic gold. So he has a front row seat. Any thoughts? 
Okay, so it must be somebody of uh, the FWB, no? Stuff? It's, it's very, very close to you when you want gold. That's so Let's try the last one. I think you'll get it. Referee, no. I was the first to whistle after the winning point. Spanish! It's it the is. referee. Yes. Uh, let's, um, well, I don't know his name, but it's a really nice referee. It's a really, really, uh, uh, with charisma. He's nice. <laughs> <laughs> let's just play it out. Hopefully you manage to work it out, but if not, then it's me. I'm Jose Maria Padron, international referee from Spain. Ah, <laughs> nice. Your family and friends are safe and healthy. See you in the tour next year. So there you go. Cozy. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry that I said um, Italian or uh, Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the first referee from your gold medal match. The first person other than Kira that you probably shook hands with and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think in those tournaments it's a um, pity, but we probably don't really... Um, yeah, recognize the referees, referees so much. But that's a good sign, actually, right? <laughs> when we yeah, well, exactly. Them. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, it's a good sign if you don't notice the ref. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So for some, you would go and, after the Olympics, take some time out. Instead, you go and become a German champion again. Um, and then you win the World Tour Finals. Just, just because... Just, just because you wanted to keep it going, or what? what was winning, thought, winning right? is a good habit, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but I would have was... stayed on the Copacabana and lit up a cigar and and drunk cocktails for three months and and be okay with it. But it's actually we really uh, we were sitting together. I mean, I think two or three days after the um, gold medal, and it was, I remember, it was Kira, me, Jurgen, and I think our manager Andy. And uh, we like we were before we were eating and drinking, and then Jung said, "Okay, we need one more serious talk." And we, Kira and me, we looked at each other and we we're like, "Oh no, not again! Let's just like relax." <laughs> and then he said, "Like, um, there's two more tournaments. Do you want to win them?" And we were like, "Oh, do I have to answer this now? I really don't want to think about it." <laughs> and then we were like, uh, "Yeah, I think we want. Okay, we want to win this." And then he was like, "Okay, then we, but we need to start preparing for it. And we, you will be tired, and you will be. Um, there will be lots of media. There will be lots of appointments and lots of excitement, and um, probably invitations for partying or galas. And we need to make sure to not." to do too much because you will be tired and uh, we were like i don't know if i like it right now but yeah okay let's do it yeah so that was the start of um, that we actually could do it otherwise there would have been no chance with all the things um yeah galas and parties and stuff and no practicing um to win those tournaments and we really wanted to you yeah. know it comes with the territory, right? The Olympic gold medalist, you have to go back and compete in Germany and the whole thing just catches fire and the knock-on effect is, is, is crazy. In Germany, the German championship is always crazy. It's like a mecca of beach volleyball. And it's kind of, you also want to show there that what you do international, um, right? Yeah, you want to show what you uh, can do and play good and for your fans, for your partner, sponsors. And so we wanted to look good there. And um, yeah, I'm actually really happy that we had the power to win those um, German championship. We were both really tired. Lots of people wanted to talk to us. I mean, it was really nice. We also wanted to talk, but we were tired and had almost no energy anymore. Um, but it was really cool feeling actually to um, give everything back to our, fam uh, to our fans, um, family, um, to the team to win this German championship again. Did you view it as a risk at all? Because imagine if you went back to the German championship and didn't win. <laughs> that would be embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, we, could, al we could, always had the uh, we always had the excuse. Uh, we just won the Olympics. We were tired and had yeah. No we, we had some galas and, <laughs> yes, and dinners. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I had those high heels on, and my calves are really hurting. <laughs> 
so maybe that was kind of always the excuse in our background uh, back head but um it was like i think yeah, i mean i like i said already kira hates it to lose so it's always easy to stand next to her <laughs> so um yeah it was um was a really good tournament 2017 world champs was the one that you were missing did you feel it was that time for you guys like that was a big push after the Olympics to, to go again before having a break and yeah, obviously having sure. Tia and Silly done. That was definitely a big thing. Um, that's why we um, we were also sitting after the um, season together and um, everybody was saying what we want, what they want, or if we want to keep um, continuing or um, and we both were really like straightforward. Okay, let's go. We want the world champs. We want the next um, season and we feel so good. We don't want to stop now. So it was really, as a team, we felt also really good. Like also the team around the team, um, everything worked like this and um, that would have been stupid to stop. Sure. Louis, to, to wrap this up, can we go to the top five? Have yes. you had a chance to think about your top five career victories? Yes, I was thinking a little bit um, about it actually. And I have to say, I need to start um, right before, like, I go to the start from uh, I played beach volleyball because we had in the beginning definitely the country quotas as well and that was uh, where we were really young and had to go through country quota and qualification and then coming to the main draw. So actually um, winning with um, Sarah Gola um, in the beginning a country quota match was always a big victory because it was always a nervous thing to actually come to the tournament. Um, and we were young, had not really money, had to travel a lot of um, a lot of times to go to a lot of countries we have never been. So it was really big excitement, and we had also at this time not really always a coach with us. Um, so winning a country quota match was um, definitely a big thing. So I can't really say one um, yeah. country quota, yeah. but it was always a big thing. Um, and then the um, second big victory was. Um, actually winning a main draw match uh, after having country quota and qualification we were always so satisfied with everything that we always lost our focus and our attention so we always lost in the main draw and we were really frustrated and we didn't know what to do and um, a big thing was actually winning the first time also main draw uh, match um, i also can't say one of um, there were, were um, I actually can't remember the first main draw match, but I can remember there was definitely a hard step to get over it. And now the big three victories are definitely um, the first gold medal match uh, or a gold medal on the FIVB that was in Shanghai with um, Kira. And I think I played nine finals before with Sarah Gola and we always lost uh, so we always got the silver medal and we never could make the step um, to the gold uh, medal and with Kira was the first time and it was really um, yeah definitely a big um, success and um, going in the right direction with a young player that was big and then obviously winning the gold medal match in Rio de Janeiro um, was uh, almost the biggest i think the biggest match uh, was um the quarter final in the olympics actually for me personally it was actually um the most important or most um or the hardest victory because we always lost against canada before or almost always lost and then there was this quarter final and um, then i think i played my best beach boy by there it felt so good and um that's why i think this is my most important and like having the step from country quota uh, from qualification uh, from quarterfinals to the semi-finals was a big big thing so that's why i think this is a um yeah biggest victory so when you look back at rio that match is the one that you view as actually the most important to create the ending that, that happened Yes, wow. I would say, yeah, definitely wow. like this. I was definitely, emotionally wise, I was always, um, also after the last point, I went a back set and made the point in the left corner over Sarah Pavin and going always um, over Sarah is always difficult because she's fucking high. And um, <laughs> <laughs> that uh, was, um, I just turned around 
looked to the team and I was just like, I can't believe it. We did it. And it was a really good match. And um, yeah, I mean, Sarah and um, Bensley, Heather Bensley, they always played really good against us. They definitely always had us. And in this game, not. I was like, no. Oh. <laughs> and it was pretty comfortable, if I remember as well, right? You played, played yes. really well. Yes. So that was, uh, yeah, because uh, the um, meeting, the one hour meeting before, watching the video was definitely helping. <laughs> Un unbelievable. Yeah, the one, the one hour that you had. Just, I was, yeah. When, we, time at the Olympics as well. when he was set, setting up the meeting one hour and I was like, seriously, one hour watching video? Wow. <laughs> It's like those podcasts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly the same feeling. <laughs> like my concentration is not that long, always. <laughs> mine neither. <laughs> Being a good multitasker means you can only concentrate for two minutes. I can, yeah, seriously, <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. um, that's all we have time for in episode one. We've actually gone, gone way over. But Laura, thank you so much for coming on. It was an absolute honor um, to mm. have you. And really co we were... cool talking to you and remembering mm. uh, to the time in 2016. Yeah, we're very much looking forward to the next episode. Matt, thank you very much for your time. I, re no I reckon that, that, that lived, up, lived up to the hype, didn't it? And Absolutely. It like... Absolutely. I remember where I was when you won and now this is the first time I've actually talked to you. Oh, where? Um, so... Have you been actually? Where was I? Yeah. I was, I, I'll be honest, I was in bed. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't I, watch? Uh, no, I was in bed watching. Ah, okay. <laughs> because I was back in England and yeah, yeah. So. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. all right. At least you watched. No, I least you watched exactly. in the middle of the night. It was the middle of yeah. the night. Uh, cool. Yeah. Cool. I, I have nothing to add to that. <laughs> um, to, to, to our listeners, make sure you subscribe, tell your friends. This is what you need to be listening to if you're into your volleyball and your beach volleyball. Suggest some guests for us. You can send us in some questions and you can ask the world's best. Use the hashtag LetVolleyballTalk. Finally, from me, Louis Let, the A Space from the CV. Thank you very much for your time and listening. And we look forward to having you along next time. Yeah, can't wait. Brilliant. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.